Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is the A Plus Tutor. Today, we're going over parallel lines and transversals. Two parallel lines and a transversal looks like this. The two lines, L and M, will never touch. They are parallel to each other. And the transversal intersects both lines. There are relationships between the angles on these lines. Using these relationships, we can identify what angles are congruent to each other and if we can find the value of that angle using the relationship. Let's start with corresponding angles. Angles that are on the same side of the transversal and on the same side of the parallel lines are corresponding angles. Angle 2 and angle 6 are both on top of the parallel line and to the left of the transversal, so they are corresponding and they're congruent. Another example of corresponding angles would be angle 4 and angle 8. Angle 3 and angle 5 are called alternate interior angles. These angles are on the interior of our parallel lines and they alternate our transversal. Therefore, we call them alternate interior angles and alternate interior angles are congruent. Angle 1 and angle 7 are alternate exterior angles. These angles are on the exterior or on the outside of our parallel lines and they are on opposite sides of our transversal. So therefore, they are called alternate exterior angles and alternate exterior angles are also congruent. Lastly, angle 4 and angle 5 are consecutive interior angles. These angles are on the same side of our transversal and are on the inside of our parallel lines. So they're consecutive interior angles. Consecutive interior angles add up to give us 180 degrees. So the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 5 equals 180. If we were to look closer into two intersecting lines, we have a few other relationships we can identify. First, we have vertical angles. Vertical angles are angles that are across from each other when two lines intersect. Vertical angles are always congruent to each other. So for example, angle A and angle C are vertical angles and they are congruent. We also have supplementary angles. Supplementary angles will add up to give us 180 degrees. So angle A and angle B are supplementary angles because when we look at a straight line, that is 180 degrees all the way across. But if we cut that line in at any point and make two angles in between them, those two angles will add up to 180 degrees. Therefore, in this example, angle A and angle B are supplementary angles and add up to give us 180 degrees. Similarly, we have complementary angles. We use complementary angles when we are working with right angles. Right angles are worth 90 degrees. So if we take a right angle and intersect that with a line segment, then we'll get two corresponding angles. The sum of those angles is 90 degrees, or in this example, angle E plus angle F would give us 90 degrees. Now, let's look at some examples where we need to identify the angle pairs within two parallel lines and a transversal. In this example, lines S and T are parallel, and lines M and N are parallel as well. Let's start with angle 1 and angle 12. Angle 1 and angle 12 are both on the exterior of our parallel lines, and they are on opposite sides of our transversal, so they're alternating. So that means angle 1 and angle 12 are alternate exterior angles. Let's look at angle 2 and angle 10. Angle 2 and angle 10 are on the same side of our transversal. Additionally, they are on the same side of our parallel lines. So this means they're corresponding angles. Next, let's look at angle 4 and angle 9. Angle 4 and angle 9 are on opposite sides of our transversal, so they're alternating, 
and they are on the interior of our parallel lines. Therefore, angle 4 and angle 9 are alternate interior angles. Now, let's look at angle 6 and angle 3. Angle 6 and angle 3 are alternating our transversal. They're on opposite sides of our transversal, and they are on the outside of our parallel lines. Therefore, angle 6 and angle 3 are alternate exterior angles. Now, we have angle 7 and angle 13. Angle 7 and angle 13 are on the same side of our transversal, and they're both on the inside of our parallel lines. This makes them consecutive interior angles. Next, we have angle 4 and angle 8. Angle 4 and angle 8 are both on the same side of our transversal, and they're on the same side of our parallel lines as well. So this means they are corresponding angles. Next, we have angle 12 and angle 13. Angle 12 and angle 13 are on opposite sides of our transversal, so they're alternating, and they're on the inside of our parallel lines. Therefore, angle 12 and angle 13 are alternate interior angles. Last, we have angle 10 and angle 13. These are both on the same side of our transversal, and they're on the inside of our parallel lines. That means angle 10 and angle 13 are consecutive interior angles. Now, given two lines are parallel, and we have two different transversals being cut, and given the angle measurements for two of our angles, let's find the measure of the following angles. First, angle four. Angle one and angle four are supplementary angles. This means that angle one plus angle four equals 180 degrees, or angle four equals 180 degrees minus angle one. So, if we substitute 78 for angle 1, we get angle 4 is equal to 102 degrees. Next, we need to find the measure of angle 16. Well, angle 4 and angle 16 are corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are congruent, therefore, since angle 4 equals 102 degrees, angle 16 also equals 102 degrees. Angle 1 and angle 16 are consecutive interior angles. This means that the sum of my interior angles, so angle 1 plus angle 16, is equal to 180 degrees. So angle 16 is equal to 180 minus angle 1, or angle 16, just like we found, is equal to 102 degrees. Next, let's find the measure of angle 13. Well, angle 1 and angle 13 are corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are congruent, so, if angle 1 equals 78 degrees, then angle 13 also equals 78 degrees. Also, angle 16 and angle 13 are supplementary angles. So, angle 16 plus angle 13 equals 180 degrees. And solving for angle 13 gives us 78 degrees. Next, let's find the measure of angle 10. Well, angle 10 and angle 11 are supplementary angles. So, angle 10 plus angle 11 equals 180 degrees. Angle 10 is going to equal 180 degrees minus the value of angle 11, or minus 47, and angle 10 will equal 133 degrees.
Next, let's find the measure of angle 9. Well, angle 11 and angle 9 are vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent. So since angle 11 is equal to 47 degrees, this means angle 9 is also equal to 47 degrees. Another way we can find angle 9 is angle 9 and angle 10 are supplementary angles. So angle 9 plus angle 10 is equal to 180 degrees, or angle 9 equals 180 minus angle 10, which is 133, and we find that angle 9 is equal to 47 degrees. Next, let's find the measure of angle 5. Angle 5 and angle 9 are corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are congruent, so angle 5 will be equal to angle 9, which is 47 degrees. Also, another way we can find this is angle 5 and angle 11 are alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles are congruent. So this means angle 5 is equal to the value of angle 11, which is 47 degrees. Now let's find the value of angle 8. Well, angle 8 and angle 10 are alternate exterior angles. Alternate exterior angles are congruent, so the value of angle 8 is going to be equal to the value of angle 10, which is 133 degrees. Also, angle 8 and angle 5 are supplementary angles. So angle 8 plus angle 5 equals 180, or angle 8 equals 180 minus the value of angle 5, and we get the angle 8 equals 133 degrees. Last, let's find the measure of angle 2. Angle 2 and angle 16 are alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles are congruent, so angle 2 equals the measure of angle 16, which is 102 degrees. Or, angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary angles. So, angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 180 degrees, or angle 2 equals 180 degrees minus angle 1, and angle 2 equals 102 degrees. Angle 2 and angle 4 are vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent, so angle 2 is equal to the value of angle 4, which is 102 degrees. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below what other topics you'd like for me to review. I upload new videos every Tuesday and every Thursday at 1 p.m. You can also feel free to leave me comments on my Instagram or on my Facebook page at the A Plus Tutor. I'll have those links below as well. See you next time.